Good afternoon and welcome to the monthly EDTA Town Hall webinar series. Today's topic is Theater in Our Schools Month. I want to introduce myself and our wonderful guests who are here with us today. I'm Julie Cohn Theobald, the Executive Director of EDTA, and I host these every month on different topics that are benefits to members and programs to participate in. And I hear, have with us here today a special guest from California. Janine, would you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Janine Lopez. I'm the theater teacher at Valley View High School in Moreno Valley and the troop director for Troop 4735. And our troop has received the Theater in Our Schools Award for the last two years. Congratulations. Thank you. Sandra? <laughs> Hi, I am Sandra Lundgren. I'm the content director for EDTA, and I help make sure that everyone gets the information they need, when they need it, online, in email, and in print. And I'm Ashley Kruger, the marketing and communications manager here at EDTA. And so my job is helping to promote EDTA and ITS initiatives in social media, email, and the news. Thank you all for being here. And we're going to start with what is Theater in Our Schools Month? Take it away. All right, every year in March, EDTA and the International Thespian Society and the Educational Theater Foundation and the American Alliance for Theater and Education partner for Theater in Our Schools Month to raise awareness about the value of theater education and draw public attention to the need for all students to have access to a quality theater program. And you, like Janine and her troop, can play an important role in spreading the word in your community. Here's a look at the breadth and scope that TIAS has grown into. Um, just in this past year in the Theater in Our Schools Month campaign for 2019, you can see that more than 60,000 views were on the videos that were shared, and that's from individuals and troops participating and sharing these messages online. And similarly to what Janine and her troop did that you'll hear more about in just a minute, you can see that more than half of the participants reached out to elected officials about the importance of having theater in their schools. Here's a further look at some of the numbers and why they add up when we participate in TIOS together. These are two examples of 31 facts for 31 days that are posted on the Educational Theater Association Facebook. And last year in 2019, thanks to the sharing from troops and individuals who participated, the average daily reach for these posts was more than 67,000. That's amazing. So congrats to you, Ashley, and all these teachers and troops and students who participated to make that happen. Thank you. And that's actually part of the answer to the question of why should you spend your time and ask your students to spend their time participating in TIAS? Because we all know about the benefits of school theater and how it gives a place to belong, a place to learn and practice empathy and compassion, a place to develop communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. But this is our moment, school theater's moment, to tell our story and have our purpose and value be recognized across the country. TIAS is that time when we work together to detail why school theater matters to your school principals and superintendents, other schools in your district, to mayors and state representatives and all the other stakeholders about why theater matters in the lives of students in 2020. Janine, last year, as part of your efforts, you chose a very special poster to help tell your story. Could you tell us about that? So one of the, we have three or four posters, but one of the biggest posters we use is we have a, a poster that we put at our door during our shows that say uh, the arts matter and I support the arts and we have all of the patrons that come and see our shows sign it and then we turn that into our we, we do usually two of them and we turn in one to our superintendent and the other one to our state representative along with a letter stating why uh, the arts matter. That's a great way to get everybody involved. Thank you for sharing that. So that's just one example of endless ways to participate. 
there's things to do online, there's raising visibility in your school with posters like that or announcements or collaborating with different departments or maybe writing something or doing a video. Point is, there's no one single way. Everyone in your theater program can participate in some way in Theater in Our Schools Month. And that can lead to some extra benefits for students. Janine, can you talk about why you decided to make this a priority for your troop and why you wanted to get involved in the first place? So um, I became a teacher in California, but I didn't grow up here. I actually grew up in Central Florida and I went to a very small school and I was part of Troop 4602 as a student and I had a great uh, theater teacher at that time and I stayed with the program. And I just remember how important it was to me as a student and all the experiences that my drama teacher had allowed us to have and the different uh, shows we saw and the competitions we went to. So when I became a teacher, I thought that being so close to Hollywood and the studios that it would probably be an even bigger event. And so when I found out that it wasn't as, uh, that ITS wasn't as significant in California as it is in Florida, I felt the need that I needed to step up and try to make that a priority so that my kids had the same experience as I did and that they see the worth, especially so close to Hollywood, because there are so many jobs that they can get. I believe it's the, when I checked last, the entertainment industry in our area is like the second largest industry. So I wanted to make sure my students have just as much of an opportunity to get those jobs than any other student. So you, you saw it as an opportunity to promote theater, but also to directly impact your students in terms of them getting more opportunities. Yes, because in um, I just found out uh, locally or recently that in the state of California, only like like 36% of our students are ever exposed to the performing arts while in the K through 12 system. And that that to me was astonishing and that I feel is really doing a disservice to the students because of the skills and the things that the students learn, not just by going to experience other events elsewhere, but by participating in it just during school. Thank you for your leadership. And while it's not March just yet, you can actually start your participation now by pledging to participate in March by visiting the TIOS page of EDTA's website. There you can pledge to participate as a thespian troop or as an individual. Uh, when you make the pledge this year, you'll actually receive weekly resources and suggested activities that you can do throughout the month of March. And if you sign up as a troop, you do become eligible to win a TIOS Outstanding Impact Award for your efforts. Janine, how have your students and your school reacted to your being honored for your TIOS work? The students, uh, the first year that we were honored, I actually had my drama club president. He was the one that took initiative to put everything together and keep track of it because he felt even more empowered uh, just by me telling him, look, we could do this. And so my students really took the initiative. So when they received the, the awards, most whenever we take pictures, I don't, I take the picture, I'm not in it because I feel like they're the ones that did the, the, the work. I was just the person, the adult in the room to kind of guide them. And so they really take pride in uh, winning that in both awards. And our administration really realizes how important it is to them. And they take, they are very um, proud of the students for all the work that they do with the arts advocacy and theater in our schools month uh, that the district really has started to step up and really acknowledge the students and what they do and how much they help the community. You're shining a light on them. So right now you might start to be getting inspired by Janine and thinking to yourself, oh dear, but how can I do all that? Well, the good news is you don't have to start from scratch. You do not have to invent this wheel. Of course, you can improvise and do what's best for you, but there are a whole host of resources already created for you that you can start with. These, again, are on the TIOS page on the School Theater website. Um, there are suggestions for announcements and bigger messages, too, like a news release or a letter to the editor for your local news site or radio or TV. But probably the most important resource is a set of 31 facts, one for each day in March, 
And the best and easiest way to use the 31 facts is to follow EDTA or the Thespian Society on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and use the hashtag TS20 to share the posts every day. Of all of these things, Janine, which were most helpful to your students? The items that was that were the most helpful when we first got, it, got started was the 31 theater facts so that we had a base to start with. So we use those to post on our Instagram and our Twitter and our Facebook each day, as well as in the morning announcements. Administration lets a student, uh, usually my vice president goes up there and makes the announcement in the, in the regular announcements that they have after the Pledge of Allegiance. And then we also uh, send the information to uh, admin at the district office and then to our state representatives as well. And then the guide that was also given, I believe we used the template that was there for the press releases. Thanks, that's great to hear actually, it's really exciting. Um, this year, each week of TIOS has a different focus to help you focus your efforts. And we're gonna start with spreading the word online and work up to advocacy efforts. And Janine, your students did do some terrific social media work. And I think one of the most interesting things about what they did was they started preparing their messages. When was that last year that they started working on them? Last year, they actually started, I believe in December, and then they finalized everything in February so that we were ready for March. That's but it's not too late for anyone no. who hasn't started. <laughs> we try to make it easy. <laughs> Absolutely not too late. You're right. <laughs> okay, so this year, the Thespians are going to be taking the lead for the first week of TIAS in social media with the Thespian Spirit Week photo challenge. So this challenge is hosted by the International Thespian Officers on the Thespian Society Instagram account. You can see the handle there. Uh, the photo challenge features weekly prompts and actually daily prompts even to help show your thespian pride and join in the fun on social media. Individuals who are signed up for TIAS can kick off the first week by sharing their theater education story on social media and using the hashtag TIAS as we've, TIAS20 as we've mentioned before. Um, a, a quick way, a quick example of how to get started sharing your theater story, think about answering a question on social media to tell your story, such as how has theater or arts education changed your life, or how has a theater teacher or mentor uh, changed your life? And share that again with hashtag TIOS20. You can also find videos of celebrity spokespeople um, on the uh, theater edu or Educational Theater Association YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash school theater one. There is a playlist there of different celebrity spokespeople sharing their stories and you can share those as much as you like on social media. We also share a lot of these videos directly in the social media sites and that makes it very easy just to comment or share with your friends. Exactly. All right, during week number two, the focus is um, on school, that doesn't mean you have to stop being online, far from it, stay online all month long as you are able, but that's the time when uh, the focus is on announcements and displays and school media and maybe special presentations to the student body or faculty. And Janine and her troop did something um, special there too. Could you share one or two examples? Well, you actually already have about the school announcements. Is there anything else that you think would be helpful for everybody? Uh, we also print, uh, they're actually printing right now, I set my printer, we make small posters of just fact, factual information and we put it in the teacher's boxes and then when, uh, when March starts, then we will post them all around the school and continually update them as they fall down and the students will also use um, I have uh, a lot of butcher papers, so they'll use the paint and markers and stuff to make bigger banners to hang up. And this year they actually want, uh, I, I'm part of a, a, like a you make space and so I can make banners and stuff. So they want to make a bunch of banners to go in the whole A-wing to get the message out there and have people uh, post to our, our um, Facebook and our Instagram 
how, what they think of the arts and stuff. And we also have a, like a little performance that we'll have. And we always get permission ahead of time and we'll do it where teachers just can voluntarily have their students come watch it. Thank you for sharing that. I'm, I'm really being so blown away because we, we think about examples of things and then to hear how somebody's actually putting it all together is really exciting uh, for, for us who only get to work with the samples, not actually get to put it out in front of a school. So thank you for sharing this, Janine. I really love, we love hearing about it. So in the third week, the emphasis is on being present and visible in your local school district. But that might mean traveling to another school uh, at some other level, an elementary school or a middle school. And Janine, again, um, you guys do something really interesting. You collaborate with the special education prom. Can you share a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, at my school, we have severely handicapped, uh, moderate to severely handicapped. So a lot of times these students are not able to stay after school and see the shows because they take buses or different medical reasons. So we will do a show during school just for them. Usually it's a fairy tale show that we do through intermediate theater. And then we will help with their prom because they usually have a prom right around uh, sometime in March, sometimes April, just depends on our spring break. And um, so we'll help with the decorations and doing performances. We did face painting one year for them. Last year we made their photo backdrop and uh, then students will volunteer to be there to do anything that's needed for the prom. And there's another way to be part of your community too, and that's to take advantage of your local media outlets, whether it's newspaper or a website or a TV or a radio station. And Janine, you guys got a couple of great placements, the Moreno Valley Matters and the End of Week Newsletters. Can you share how your students did that and how it helped your efforts? So Marino, uh, the Marino Valley Matters is, it's a free like newspaper that you could pick up anywhere. I think everybody that lives in the, in the uh, city receives it for free in their mail. And I believe it's every month or quarter, I can't remember. And we'll send information in there about our shows with a picture so that we just promote that. And then around this time of year, we'll send more um, specifics about supporting the arts and coming out because the community that uh, the school is in has no community theater. The closest one is a, about, a, I don't know, about 15 minutes, 20 minutes uh, to the next town. So we try to get people to, to realize there's so much going on in their local schools that it's close, not as expensive as going to LA. And um, then the, and the district and everybody has noticed they even started uh, a, a school, I mean a city uh, Instagram called Marino Valley Arts Now so that they, people really want to see more of it and want to know more of what's going on and what shows they can go see. Wow, thank you again. Um, so you're in touch with your city officials, which leads us right into the week four emphasis, which is elected officials week. So this is about school boards and other elected officials. You can plan to attend, be present at a school board meeting and um, and make a presentation or reach out to the officials via their social media or send them an email or pick up the phone and make an appointment to visit with them. And Janine and her students really, really persevered in this effort and it ended up paying off in the long run. Would you tell us about the opportunity that you created with your representative, Jose Medina? Yes, so last year my students had, we go to a festival called, called uh, CETA or California Educational Theater Association and students put in for, they filled out the paperwork, they wanted to be considered for scholarships to go to Sacramento for California Youth in Theater Day. And three of my students received scholarships last year. So we took a day off and we got up very early in the morning and we flew to Sacramento and the students got to perform in front of the state capitol. And then prior to that, we were trying to get a hold of our representatives. So I don't live in this uh, particular area where for the, so I have a different representative. So I took it, I made the students do it. I told them we are gonna do this, but um, these are the people that you're, you and your family are voting for. So I want to make sure you know who they are and how to find them. 
So it took us a little while to try to go through the right people and find out who's who and talking to different interns and stuff. So then we were able to get a hold of uh, the state representative, Jose Medina, and we made an appointment. So the students, while we were up there that day, we were able to go in and meet with him and they had prepared questions for him and asked him different things about uh, why he thinks the arts are important and they explained why they felt they were. And uh, they had a very nice conversation. I just kind of stay back because I want the students to really be the leaders because they're the ones that um, make the program what it is. I'm one person. There's you know 300 of them in the program. So I want to make sure that they know how to keep it going and they know how to move on with it when they go into the college or professional world. So they had a good time and they invited him to our show that we had had that week. Uh, sadly, he did not make it because of the uh, fog that was in Sacramento when his flight was coming back. Janine, I'm curious how your students felt about having to reach out to some of these decision makers um, getting on the phone. How did they feel before and how did they feel after? Uh, before they were petrified. <laughs> I would have to walk them through it. I was like, okay, save this. Okay, this is what you're looking for. You know, because a lot of them don't know how to find the, this information out. And then, of course, phone etiquette is, is much different when you're doing this, you know, as a, a professional and getting this uh, out there instead of talking to your friend, you know, so they had to learn how to do that. And afterwards, they really, really were proud of themselves and realized, okay, I can do this. I can really make a difference. I can talk to people. I know what to do and how to communicate and where to go to find information to find who to talk to. It strikes me, we talk a lot about how theater teaches life skills. And a lot of that is through rehearsals or performing, but boy, this had nothing to do with rehearsing or performing, but it sure taught them some great life skills. Yes, definitely. As we transition to um, our conclusion here, I want to just let everyone know on the webinar that if you hover at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A box. And if you have a question for Janine or Sandra or Ashley, you can actually type it into the box at any time. Um, so with that, I'll turn this back over to Sandra. Sure, and we'll talk about the award in just a second, but Janine, please share with us who these smiling faces belong to. So that is Yasmin, Bianca, and Mitchell. They were all seniors last year. They were the students that received the scholarship to go, the scholarships to go to Sacramento for that day. And um, they had a great time. Uh, I think one of them had never even been on a plane. So, you know, that was interesting. <laughs> And um, we even had Bianca's mom came with us. She bought a ticket at the last minute because she was like, nope, if my daughter's going to do this, I'm going to do this too. And I'm going to go in there and, and talk about how important this is to my daughter and my family. So uh, they had a great day. We loved it. They got to, to talk about how they feel about it. And Mitchell is actually, Mitchell and Yasmin uh, are actually in school to be theater teachers. And uh, Bianca has started her own eyelash company. An entrepreneur. <laughs> that, that is just great to, to learn about, you know, how this experience is, is really staying with them. And of course, they are award winners, excuse me, award winners as well. So the Outstanding Impact Awards, there is a rubric on the TS website in the categories are the work you do in your school, within your district and community, and with elected officials. The award submissions open on April 1st and close on April 15th. And the awards are actually adjudicated by the International Thespian Officers. So the promotional work is evaluated as outstanding in two out of three categories. And um, then, Somewhat, some troop like 4735 can get the happy news that they are being acknowledged for all of their efforts. I love the fact that we have students adjudicating this award. That's really unique. So just one final question, Janine. If someone is tuning in and has never done anything with theater in our schools month before, this is the very first time they're complete newbies. What is the very first thing you'd recommend that they do? 
to look at all of the facts about it that is posted online to really get an, a grasp of it, as well as look up what the facts are for your state. Because when you know about your state, then you'll really know where on the spectrum your students lie when it comes to their exposure to the performing arts. And then contact your district office to see if you're, if you're able to speak to the, the superintendent like we were able to. Great. And if anyone has other questions in the future that they think of later, um, you can contact Ashley um, and her information is here. It looks like we may have one other question. Okay, here's a question. Um, Janine, how did you get your students on board with the advocacy part? Um, this teacher has participated the last couple of years, but struggled to really get the students to take a lead and understand the importance of this project when it comes to advocacy. I inform the students that um, at any moment, you know, any of us might not be able to, I might get sick or there might be something, but if they really enjoy the program, then we have to make sure people know that we like it. Everyone knows in our district and in our city that football, you know, everyone loves football. They go to our football games or our basketball games or volleyball. So they, I really get the kids to understand how important it is for them to promote the program, especially that a lot of them have older siblings or younger siblings, and they're either, they've either, either gone through the program or they're going to come up into the program. And they really, once you have them buy into the fact that um, they're the ones that keep the program going, that it's not me, that it, it, it truly is them, then they wanna do more. And once they see that they're making a difference and people are listening, then they'll do more and more and more. Sometimes they'll do more than you're anticipating, but you know, you'll appreciate it. But a lot of my, a lot of times we're here late because they've come up with great ideas and you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to stifle their creativity with how to advocate for what is, you know, what they feel is important to them and their right to have an arts education. That is very inspiring. I want to thank you for inspiring us today and um, thank everyone for taking the time to um, talk with us about Theater in Our Schools Month. This webinar will be posted for anyone. Um, it will be publicly posted on our YouTube channel in just another day or so. So please encourage your peers and friends and your students if they want to watch to uh, learn more about Theater in Our Schools Month. I want to thank you for your time today, but what I really want to thank you for is what you're going to do in March, uh, which is exactly what Janine said. We all know the impact of theater in our lives and in our students and in our schools. It's our job to make sure that everybody else understands so that those resources are there and the momentum can be. So thank you so much, and we'll be back next month with another topic from EDTA. Have a great day.